and in this video I want to cover the recoil and how to actually play it. So starting out we have three curves. One's for control rotation so think of that like your camera so you can make your camera kind of rise and you have to pull down and that kind of stuff. The other two location and rotation those curves are specific for your firearm. So if you don't want your camera to move for example you would just leave the control rotation curve empty. So moving on we're going to go ahead and go to our curves folder here and I'm going to go ahead and start organizing this. So I'm going to create a new folder and call it sway and put the existing ones that we have right inside. And I'm going to make another one called recoil. So the easiest way to start is going to be to grab the recoil from the M4. So we're going to go to it, grab the three curves, copy and paste them into our recoil uh, folder. So let's see, what did I name these? Tutorial Firearm. All right, so I'm going to swap out M4 with Tutorial Firearm like so. Just so we have a decent setup. Now we can go ahead and grab the Tutorial Firearm Recoil Control Rotation, put that under the Control Rotation Curve. And likewise, set the recoil location and recoil rotation in their perspective or uh, respective slots there for the curves. Now we can actually go ahead and start testing this out. So by just playing it. So this is really easy to do. So I'm in my character here in the firearm event graph that we made. I'm just going to go ahead and grab the shooter pawn component. And actually, let's go ahead and create a uh, left mouse button input first. We're going to get our shooter pawn component and we're going to call or search for recoil. Here you can see perform procedural recoil and it takes in three parameters and these are required. So for example, if I try to compile, it'll fail. So what we can do is we can either right click, create variables for all three of these, which would actually be a little bit smarter. So I want to do that. So I'm going to promote all three to variables and get them situated like so. So what are these? Well, multipliers, simply put. These are the easiest way to kind of globally change how much recoil you have. And these can also be, um, these kind of overtake stats. So they get applied on top of your stats. So the purpose of this would be for something like, let's say you wanted a game where you have more recoil standing than you did crouching. Then when you went from crouching to prone, prone would have less recoil than crouching. So kind of along those lines, so you can basically link this up to your stance and control it via these. However, by default, we're just going to leave these as one rotators and one vectors, and we should be good to go. So now when I press play, you can see we have our recoil. And that's really all it is. So here we can kind of get an idea through the curves of what they actually are. So it's just a very simple, I don't know how to describe it. It's a recoil curve. The location might be the simplest because for the location, the only thing I'm doing is the rearward motion. So what we do is here on the first frame, we're starting out at a value of negative 0.15. And then as the recoil decreases, so it starts to reset, it's going to taper back down to nothing and it's actually going to jump forward a little bit. So if we wanted to, we could say, take this and we'll give this a value of, we'll do 10, something absurd. So now when I shoot, you can see the firearm, you know, just launches forwards like that. So that's basically one way to kind of look at it. So this would be your forward and back. You have your other axes. So left, right and you have your uh, up and down as well for the control rotation it's very simple red would be the pitch because that's the primary mover and then we have a little bit of left to right and the way i have it set up is it'll favor one side so for example i'll go ahead and aim at this corner and i'll just start shooting try not to move my mouse either you can see we've kind of started to favor the right hand side rather than being uh, directly in line but it's just very subtle anyways so 
Now, what are these randoms? So we have control, basically our control randoms, our location randoms, and our firearm uh, rotation randoms. So these are the random, well, values that we want. So for example, if I wanted to say have like a drastic change, so the easiest one to th actually I can think of would probably be to have the rotation side so that we can see it a little bit better. So for the left and right, we're going to want to have a, because I don't want it to go in favor just one side. If I did that, we could just do this. So for the pitch random, we'll do 10, or no, we'll do a 2 and 10. And this will make it to where it only goes to one side. So you can see the firearm is just only going to the right. It's not going to the left really at all. Now if I did a negative 10 and a positive 10, it's going to go randomly between left and right. So that one was right, that one was left, center, left, right, 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 center, right. And you can kind of see it like it goes left and right. So those are what these values are really for. So you kind of find a good balance of what you want. So that's for the left and right. This one would be for the pitch. And then this one would be for the roll. So like uh, canting the firearm left and right as it recoils. And likewise, you have similar settings for the location, similar settings for your control rotation. They all do the same thing. You just find what works and suits your game the best. Now, the speed at which it interpolates to none. So what this means is when you start shooting, it is interpolating itself back down to basically zero. So we want to stop the recoil pretty much. It's like a way to control it, like compensate and stop it. So even though we have our control, like our rotation here, these do accumulate as they kind of stack up. And we want to take that accumulated value and keep trying to draw it back to zero. Because because think about it, if you're holding a firearm, you fire off a round, you're going to naturally want to kind of basically have it come back to, I guess, your previous point of aim before you were firing. This is kind of a way to control that. So you can either have it to where it's very forced and it looks like you're actually manhandling the firearm and, you know, you know, actually trying to control the recoil. While you can also at the same time, by lowering these values, have it to where it acts more like it's, um, let's see, what do you call it? We'll just do two. You're more, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, kind of relaxed. So you can see this really kind of builds up and it takes a while for it to settle back down. Now if I put it back to the default of 8, which is much higher, you can see it's constantly fighting it, like you're actually in control. So you can kind of get two different styles of recoil just based on the, uh, the interpolation to non speed alone. So that's really kind of what, I guess, the best explanation that I can put. But anyhow, that's going to be all for this video, and I'll see you in the next one.